Today I'll be focusing on slide bearing lubrication uh, and I'll be going over the types of lubricants, slide bearings and lubrication as well as the basic concept of hydrodynamic lubrication. So I'm going to start off by defining what a bearing is. So it could be defined as contacting services through which a load is transmitted. A bearing is also applicable to machines and structures and bearings are found in many different uh, like objects and uh, can be used in many different situations. So a lubricant is any interposed substance that minimizes friction. Uh, a lubricant is used when relative motion occurs between, between surfaces as friction has to be minimized. And a lubricant could be either in a liquid or a solid form. Lubricants are found in like different different applications as well, such as for your car, motor oil, that's a lubricant because there's metal metal parts that are moving and touching together. So to reduce this friction, you use a lubricant, which is motor oil. Now we're gonna get into the different types of lubricants. So they're generally liquid and we'll be focusing mainly on oil lubricants. So when you purchase Oil lubricants, uh, there's different additives which are included in this to help improve the performance. So some additives include pore point depressants. Uh, this will cause the oil to flow at a lower temperature. Uh, there's also corrosion inhibitors. This will prevent metal surface corrosion. And as temperature goes down, viscosity becomes very high, meaning the flow of the liquid becomes slow. So this is an example why pore point depressants will be used. Greases. Another good example of a lubricant which is considered a liquid is grease. So greases are liquid lubricants which have been thickened to provide a special property or properties for different applications. So greases don't flow like oil. The flow rate is much different. They, they don't really flow at all really. But uh, compared to oil, uh, greases are very very thick and um, they normally stay in one position. So they're used when the lubricant needs to remain in a certain position, especially when frequent lubrication is difficult and costly. So with the use of greases, contamination prevention and uh, cooling is in improved. It's increased. There are three types of uh, lubrication, hydrodynamic lubrication, mixed lubrication and boundary lubrication. So for hydrodynamic, the surfaces are completely separated by lubricant film and surface wear does not occur. Mixed lubrication film, surface peaks are intimately in contact, and with proper design, surface wear can be mild. Boundary lubrication, the surface contact is continuous and extensive, but the lubrication reduces friction and wear. <clears throat> Complete surface separation could be achieved through two different ways, hydrostatic lubrication and the other is hydrodynamic lubrication. So for a hydrostatic, the pressure is fabricated, which means that you're compressing the liquid using an external compressor. However, you'll need a fully sealed or enclosed container, which makes the design of it incredibly more complex and expensive. So hearing all this, the better method would be hydrodynamic when being compared to hydrostatic, which is why we'll be focusing on hydrodynamic lubrication. So we'll be talking about some more about bearings. So with a slide bearing, it requires direct sliding of the load carrying member on its support as opposed to rolling element bearings, which have balls or rollers interposed between the sliding surfaces. Also, slide bearings are usually thin shells that can be easily replaced and they provide bearing surfaces on of an appropriate material such as bronze. Slide bearings can also be split or made as one piece cylindrical shell known as a bushing. So there are two different types of slide bearings. There is a journal or sleeve bearing and a thrust bearing. A journal or sleeve bearing are cylindrical and supports radial loads and a thrust bearing is generally flat and supports in the direction of the shaft axis. So as you can see to the right, this is a thrust bearing and the picture to the left, this is a sleeve bearing. Finally, we'll be going back to hydrodynamic lubrication. So to understand this concept, we have to understand and study the different parts 
of the diagram to the right. So the first thing to take note of is the shaft, which is sitting inside the housing. Uh, the diagram also shows the bearing and the clearance with some oil flowing through. So this means that this means that oil flows through, flows in and leaves at some point, meaning that there's continuous flow of lubricant. The shaft is rotating, and because of that, we want to study the coefficient of friction. So when there's no motion at all, the shaft will be resting under its weight, meaning that the bearing is in contact at this point. The oil is then pushed outwards, and once the shaft starts rotating, the friction will cause the shaft to start sliding on the side of the housing. So as the rotation increases, this starts establishing some pressure inside the oil, and because of the speed of rotation, and the hydrodynamic properties of lubricant, some of this pressure will start getting established in the thin film of oil. So because of this pressure, it will develop enough force to float the journal or the shaft. So from this, we can understand that we move from continuous friction and contact to intermittent contact to no contact at all, or hydrodynamic lubrication. So this concludes my video uh, regarding bearings and lubricants. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed and learned something. Thank you.